Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Tiffany, a retired librarian turned homeschool mom. And in this video, we're going to look at an interesting book here. So this is Me and the Sky, Captain Beverly Bass, Pioneering Pilot. Now, this has two authors. This is the first time I've done anything that's close to an autobiography uh, in picture book form. So, um, though actually I will be covering another memoir early next year. But this is an interesting book. So this is written by Beverly ba Bass herself with Cynthia Williams, who is an author. It is illustrated by Joanne Stone. So this is the tale of Beverly Bass, who was the first um, captain of a commercial airliner, particularly for American airlines. So in this book kind of tells her story from her point of view, because again, she helped write this book. So it starts off her jumping off her mother's washing machine and banging her knees, and she kept doing it. She wanted to fly, and she convinced her aunt to take her to look at the airplanes. She grew up in Fort Myers, Florida, and that's all she wanted to do. She wanted to become an airline pilot. And her parents didn't really discourage her. She grew up, she went, she graduated from high school in 1970. And she didn't really talk about her, talk to her friends about this very much. Because again, she was a woman, it was the 1970s. It, aspiring to be an airline pilot was kind of weird. So, however, she still wanted to fly. So she went and signed up for flying lessons. So she went in, looked at the airlines, little girl, she was about 19 years old when she did this. And she learned to fly. Let's see. Hands on those, hands on those wheels. That's what she wanted to do. She learned to fly. She told her parents, like, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Early on, her father thought it's like she's this is a passing fad. It's like, nope, nope, I want to fly. And eventually, she took her first. You see her mother waving, the first uh, solo flight. However, she could never fly, fly. They wouldn't let her fly um, humans yet, because that was the job for men. So, then the story talks about how she be able to fly cargo, and she studied so she could fly cargo first. And she took jobs that men didn't want, and that men basically moved on from, and she slowly moved up the ladder. She worked hard and moved up to bigger and better things. And finally, she applied for American Airlines and got accepted. She And the way they did it back then was you started from the bottom and you moved up. So she was a flight engineer. So she checked all the dials and made sure the plane was working correctly. And she did that for a while before she was eventually promoted to, after two years, to being a co-pilot. So she was the co-captain of an American airline. And she was, I believe, one of the first women to do this. And then of a passenger carrier. For a few years later, she became a true pilot. She became a captain of a commercial airliner. So she was very, very happy. And her first one of her first flights she flew into her hometown airport of Fort Myers. So, and her flight instructor and one of her school teachers and her parents were all there to see her take off in this American Airlines plane. So, she then was also the first in, uh, she was the first female to captain of American Airlines B-727 and then uh, uh, B-767. She was also the first female captain of an all-female flight crew for American Airlines and the first female Czech airman or airwoman teaching other pilots. So she actually eventually became a flight instructor as well. So she eventually, she was also the first female to command a Boeing, Boeing 777, which was at the time the biggest air commercial airliner. So she did amazing things. And her message is simple. No dream is too big. Dream big and soar high. 
that's a pretty big message. So it's an amazing illustration. In the back of the book, it goes through a couple other different stories. So you have, this is a picture of uh, our author, Beverly Bass. These are her children, and here she is with her husband. So this also tells a kind of interesting um, tale, something that happened on September 11th. She was on her way home, flying from, uh, she was flying back to Paris, to Dallas, which is where she's, where she lives. She lives in Texas. So, and she basically, 9-11 happened. So she's about to enter American airspace when they're told, Everything is closed. The entire American airspace is shut down. You need to land. So she, along with a bunch of other pilots, had to read out and contact uh, Gander Air Traffic Control, which was the closest airport in Canada to them. Because eventually, if they could, they could turn around. But she was too close. And probably had, she wouldn't have enough fuel to get back across the Atlantic. So this tiny little town in Newfoundland, Canada, it had to take on a whole bunch of people all of a sudden because they needed to land because they was realized there was an attack on the U.S. So their entire, everything was shut down, which is unprecedented. It's like airlines, like find the nearest airport, get down now. So she had to, this small community of 9,400 people had to figure out how to prepare over a matter of hours for 7,000 passengers from 38 international airlines who were all supposed to be flying into the U.S. It's like, all of a sudden, we have to stop. So she had to do that. She had to go and land in probably a relatively small airport all of a sudden. And then they had to stay there. I think they were there um, several for several days until they were able to fly home. And then she, apparently they made a play, they made a musical out of it. Because of course they didn't, they make, make a musical out of, <laughs> out of having to uh, land an airline. I don't know how that turns out, but okay. Um, so you have that. She also created a, her and a friend, Stephanie Welch, uh, who was a pilot for Vanif Airways, founded the International Society of Women Airline Pilots. So they do a lot of support and training and they get together every year and you have this. This is, um, this is uh, apparently this is the members of the International Society with Beverly in front who attended a performance of Come Away. So this was a bunch of their people down here. And then this is her with the person who played her in the musical. So this is a very, very good book. It tells a very amazing story of an amazing amazing young woman who fought the um, basically the gender barriers to become a massive <laughs> commercial airline pilot. Um, so this is a great story. It's great the fact that it was written in part by the uh, the person themselves. This is the first real picture book that I've covered that was written by the pioneer in this case themselves. So she, it was her idea how the story came out. Of course, she, they used the help of a regular children's book author and, of course, an illustrator to create this amazing book for young kids. Uh, this can definitely be read for younger ones. There's enough, it's short enough that um, it's great to be read aloud to the younger children, uh, as well as going into elementary school. Uh, it might be a little short for uh, older elementary, but it's definitely a great book for the elementary and the early ages to introduce women in space flight and the talk about women going through that uh, gender barrier to fly commercial airlines and the amount of work it took because she had to take a pilot's license, she had to work hard and study to fly cargo planes, and she had to take what jobs she could get at the time before she was trusted enough to slowly move up the ladder and fly and become the captain of a commercial airline. So it definitely represents the work that it takes and the perseverance it takes to do that kind of thing, because it's not easy. Um, flying a commercial airline is, can be dangerous, 
And it's a major responsibility. It's not all uh, computers. You have to know what the heck you're doing. So this is a really fun book. It's very enjoyable. The illustrations are fantastic. The author, uh, the illustrator is very big on the 19, the kind of the classic illustrations. I think it talks about in the back of the book. Um, yeah, Joni Stone is the illustrator and she's She's very much into the, what does it say here? Uh, the vintage styles is how it describes. So this is, it's great in the illustrations and showing off with the 1950s and 60s, kind of in the 70s clothing and the, inspire, the inspiration of being authentic of the time period that she's illustrating. So it's a great, greatly illustrated book. It's a fantastic tale. Uh, wonderful book. Again, it's it's great that it was written, uh, at least in part, by the person it's about. So this is what I would consider an autobiographical picture book. You probably don't find a lot of these, particularly not on women pioneers like this. So that's it for this book review. If you like what you see, be sure to like and subscribe. I do a lot of these uh, children's books on particularly female pioneers in different uh, sections. Um, I do a lot of people of color, along with a variety of other different books. We are secular homeschoolers, so a lot of my mind is set on education. So I do a lot of children's picture books. I do some older stuff. I do some uh, fantasy and various different book series. I do various uh, film reviews, mostly um, 80s, 90s stuff, educational stuff as well depending so be sure to check out the rest of my channel i also do some kids travel stuff and we'll be slowly adding more secular homeschooling stuff as we get to it my daughter's really young at this point so we're not quite there yet but i will definitely have those in the pipeline and planning to add them to this channel so be sure to like and subscribe and check out what i got thank you